Welcome back to Psychology Talk, the talk show where we discuss all things psychology related and interview contributors to the field. I'm your host, Sarah Conley, and for today's guest, I brought on the famous Austrian-British psychoanalyst known for her incredible work in child parent analysis and her partnership with neurologist and psychoanalyst Sigmund Freud. Please welcome Melanie Klein. Thank you for having me here today, Sarah. Of course, we're glad to have you here today. So today we're hoping to discuss your major contributions to the field of psychology and learn more about how you became the first prominent, well-known female American psychologist. Of course, first off, I feel that I can confidently say that myself and many other women in psychology have been significantly overlooked in history solely for being a woman in a male-dominated field. My education upbringing had a significant impact on my contributions. I was very ambitious to attend medical school, even at a time where women were not even thought of as important in the field, and even those dreams were shut down when my family lost their fortune. I briefly studied at the University of Vienna, but never received my academic degree, as I regrettably traveled around with my husband, whom I married at the young age of 21, and devoted my time to my family and my three children. Wow, you've definitely faced quite a number of obstacles to get where you are. So, without pursuing a medical degree, what did you, what got you interested in psychoanalysis? What originally got my interest in the psychoanalysis of children was the encouragement made by Sandra Fernancy to analyze my own children on play technique. Can you please tell us more about this play technique? Yes, so this really stemmed from my object relations theory, which is an approach stemming from the school of psychoanalysis. My findings made an incredible impact on developmental psychology as the theory places the relationship between a mother and an infant at the core personality development in an individual. This later contributed to my development of play therapy by developing a type of child analysis known as play technique. This technique was used to analyze the symbolism behind children's play activity and the interpretation of unconscious thought. That's so fascinating. Was this type of therapy influenced by any previous studies on your children? Actually, Sarah, at the time, there had been no previous studies on analyzation of children, so I was really led without any guidance. My general interest in the field of psychology was also inspired by my impression of Sigmund Freud, and I think he strengthened my striving devotion for psychoanalysis. What an interesting theory. So I understand that around this time you had also divorced your husband. This was a very non-traditional accommodation at the time. What did you pursue after this? After spending quite some time with the Hungarian Psychoanalytic Society following my divorce, I worked closely with Carl Abraham, who incorporated Freudian concepts into his own analysis of death instincts and the analysis behind oral and anal sadistic impulses. I actually incorporated these concepts into my own interpretations of child play techniques. After Abraham's passing, I moved to London, joining the British Psychoanalytic Society where I devoted most of my life to developing my play technique and the incorporation of child development into the psychoanalytic school of thought. It's very interesting to hear your incredible commitment to the field. You say Freud inspired a lot of your work. Was he a close colleague of yours throughout your career? Actually, no. Although inspired by Freud early in my career, I found myself challenging his ideas and concepts with my own analysis. My first theoretical innovation challenged his developmental theory and renewed my concept of play technique by incorporating death instincts and the development of an early superego. My future proposals consisted of conceptual ideas of a mother-child relationship. My first published idea was that an infant sees a mother as a primary object in their life that is coupled with the inner dominated desire of sadistic fantasies that could be derived from an innate aggressive drive. After the passing of my own son, I also analyzed the relationship between mourning and primitive defenses and how they were related to certain fundamental phases of development. I'm so sorry about your son, and your theories sound very groundbreaking. Well, we're just about out of time here, but before you go, I'd like to express my appreciation for your lasting contributions to your record previous findings, as well as future developed ideas in relation to psychoanalysts and development. I'd also like to highlight her ideas are even categorized alongside some of Freud's opposing ideas as Kleinism. Thank you so much, Melanie, for joining us today and telling us your story. Thank you so much for having me on today, Sarah. And if there's any viewers that would like to learn more about my theories, you can read about them on melaniekleintrust.org, which includes more in-depth information on my, bio- on my biography and work with child analysis.